Hello and welcome back to the Box Hill Podcast. I'm your host, Marco Tromboli, and with me today I have Neil. Neil, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining. So, Neil, uh, you've been a part of us for the past four months. Yep. Tell us a little about yourself. Hmm, okay. So, other than the fact that I am an intern here and I have been here for four months, um, I am just a, I just graduated university this year. So, um, I'm done and I am going into my certificate of advanced accounting in this, in September. Um, another, like, I guess a fun fact about me is that, uh, I'm an, well, I want to be an avid traveler, but I went on exchange during my third year and I visited nine countries. Wow. Nine countries. Which countries were that? If I could remember them, I would tell you, but I can tell you my favorite country. Okay, let's go. The favorite well, I can, okay, I can tell you this. So basically, I was doing school in France. So my main home was France. Mm-hmm. And I would say, you know what? It's a lot harder than I thought. Like, I can't really choose exactly which city, like which country was my favorite. But I can tell you that actually one of my most important important like trips was in France Mm -hmm. um, because I was you know with my best friends and it was like really fun Um, but I feel like I can't choose France as my favorite country just because I live there Mm -hmm. so I guess I would choose you know what I think I'm going to choose the Netherlands Netherlands yeah I don't know why like like you just walk on the streets and everyone's kind of like really nice and friendly and uh, whatnot and I don't know I just Netherlands just had that vibe for me um and i just had like one of my better like my really really good experiences there when traveling so well netherlands I, i've heard some good things about the netherlands but myself i've never been there but over france because i know everyone uh, loves france yeah so but that's good though um, that's that's very interesting you know what to be honest i never even knew that yeah <laughs> so for four months we finally get it out on the table now but countries. you know you know what i'll admit this is that if you're gonna go to france um i think my favorite part of france was probably like the south of france Okay. And um, a lot of people say like Paris is where like the heart, Paris is the heart of France. But personally for me, I thought the heart of France was obviously the, the South um, just because A, it's warm and B, I don't know. It just like, it had like that warm, calming feeling in my opinion. Paris is just so busy. Just honestly, just remind me so much of Toronto. I was like, I don't know. I just needed to. <laughs> I, I, th- I think Paris is like Toronto, like you say, because it has that, that monument. That yeah. Has that, that, that known factor with the Eiffel Tower and mm-hmm. Toronto has the scene tower. And that's that attraction, right? Yeah. Yeah, these, exactly. Where these cities in, in the south of France don't have that major attraction. Exactly. But for some people, it's the it's the the weather, right? Like mm-hmm. it's what they prefer there. So that's very interesting, though. That's uh, some good news. Um, so yeah, I know you're back at school now, right? Correct. So yes and no. So I so I did I so I just graduated my undergrad in my uh, IBBA International Business Management um, degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am like I mentioned, I'm going back to school for my advanced accounting certificate to finish some of my uh, pre uh, requisites for my CPA. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to become a, a CPA in the future, so um, I'm working towards that goal. Awesome! That's a, that's that's fantastic to hear. So today's podcast, we brought you in because we wanted to, uh, especially you, yourself, mm-hmm. um, you know, post-secondary school here, the success in that. Yeah. So it, we want to talk a little bit about that. Like, wh- what can you tell us about the difference from post-secondary school to any other levels? Okay. <laughs> okay so um, I need to kind of like think about it a little bit just because it's been a long time since I've actually been through high school. Yep. It's been like a good four years. Um, but I would say like a few differences maybe or well first in high school I went to really small school Mm -hmm. around like 500 600 like there was only maybe like 100 grade 12s in my year so it's like quite small and it's kind of like as small as my program in my in like in my former university Mm -hmm. um so like I kind of knew everyone my grade um so the familiarity of everyone in high school, like you know who you're working with, you know who your teachers are, it's always constant. Um, but university, everything is different. You have more responsibility on yourself, more freedom. Like in high school, it's very, you know, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Um, you know when your classes are, you get six hours a day, uh, whatnot. But in university, you can have like one class on Monday and just have one class. Um, I went, also like I went to a school where um, classes were three hours long. So it'd be like one class every, I don't know, like you have that one class on a select date and it'd be three hours and then that's it. Right. But then um, I went to a high school where it was non-semestered. So I'd have that class every single day for like a good hour. 
I, like at least I remember it being an hour. Like I'm not 100%. Honestly, it's been, it's been, been so it's, it's been quite some time. Wow. Yeah, but all I remember is like the classes were a lot shorter. Um, so like that took some time getting used to. Um, also like um, just seeing your friends every day mm -hmm. in the same class was um, kind of, I guess, like a good feeling. Um, but in university, you don't really get that sort of familiarity. Uh, you only see people every... Like, like you see them once a week in the same classes, um, but it's obviously not the same. Yeah. Um, but I was fortunate enough because I was like, I'm in a smaller program that's more specialized. So like I like for certain classes, like I would see the same people um, every week. So um, in a sense, like I feel like I got a, like I got more of a high school firsthand experience because I was in a more specialized program. Okay. So is it fair to say, and again, this is just like based off my assumption, mm -hmm. here, university is more independent. Oh where, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, because for me, to be honest, I mm -hmm. went just high school, and then my plan was to take a break for a year and then go to university. Mm -hmm. But then again, like I, as I mentioned in the the first podcast I did with Abs, um, I like to make money at a young age, yeah. <laughs> so I stuck with that. But when I talk to more people, I hear them say that uh, university is just a whole other level. Yeah, and that's why, like, I know you've been like. Mm -hmm. So been about four or five years of schooling in university, right? Yeah, definitely four years. Um, and like I'll say this is that you know, the thing is like a lot of people think that a lot of people go to university, mm -hmm. but in reality, a lot of people actually don't. Mm -hmm. So um, like I would never say that university is like the first route to success. Mm -hmm. I think there's so many more like so many more avenues to success. They shouldn't be like kind of like pit like tunnel like vision tunneling yourself into like just one path. Um, for me though, I knew that university was the right path just because I want to go into a very specific program and you can't really be CPA without going through school. Mm -hmm. So that's why I decided to go through the university route because I knew that the path that I want to go to, I need, I need university. But if you want to start a business, if you want to, um, I don't know, go go learn a trade like that's like that kind of success is just as good as going to university success is measured by uh by people mm -hmm. like what whatever like people think for example like for me my success my def definition of success could be different than your definition definition of success so um you shouldn't be you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people when it comes to success I, I love what you said there because I say this all the time is everyone mm -hmm. has a different version of success yeah. and, and that is key to understand and, and this is something I, again I've seen multiple times mm -hmm. before and I, and I remember I say this to all you guys too when we had our meetings is everyone has different expectations yeah. we got to separate what our expectations are compared to other people's expectations mm -hmm. if we start living our life or we continue to live our life in the way where we're going by other people's expectations then we're allowing them to kind of dictate our life right and and I see it too, even going up for myself, to be honest with you, um, you know, my friends, my family, everyone's getting married, having kids, mm -hmm. um, buying houses and stuff right. like that. So automatically it's like, okay, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. Eventually, yeah, I want to, but just because it, I always like, it's not a race, right. it's, it, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, but I always look like just because people are doing it, I'm happy for them. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I necessarily have to do it right now. When the time is right, I will do it. And that's where the, the where society in general is just mm -hmm. like, they see someone doing this, automatically this person has to do this too. And that's where, again, success is defined the way, like you said, mm -hmm. the way you want to define right. it. Because everyone has a different um, definition of success. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So that's good. So, you know, you're talking about the differences in your opinion between post-secondary and other levels. You were mm -hmm. saying a lot of freedom, you know, less stress. Um, would you say like less structure too and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Like 100%. Well, okay. Yes and no. So you have the structure in a sense where you know you have one class every week at that certain time. So you mm -hmm. have that kind of structure. But when it comes when it becomes unstructured is exactly how you kind of plan your time around your classes. Okay. So for example, you know, in high school, you have just six hours of class. You can't really do anything about six hours because you're just in class, right? Yeah, yeah. But in university, you know, you have one class at, let's just say, I'm now I'm going based off like my uh, university schedule. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one day you have, some days you might have a class from 8.30 to 11.30, because that's three hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm just trying to like figure Doing it out. Doing that mental math. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, and then you might have like a three hour break in between. And then you have like a class from two, like uh, from 2.30 to 5.30. 
right? So then you have this three hours to do something. You can eat lunch, you can go back home, take a nap, you can, you know, get ahead with some of your work, mm-hmm. um, like like some studying done, like whatever, get get an assignment done. But what you do with that time is ultimately your choice. Yep. Right? So um, so like in that kind of way, it's like unstructured. Okay. And, and, that's, and that's a lot of things I remember even we told you guys, mm-hmm. even I told you guys is, you know, especially with boxing, there wasn't set schedules. There wasn't set times. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, okay, nine to five shift. It's right. what, what you put in is what you get out. And that's what I feel like you're, you're saying there. It's like out of any, anybody in, in the world, if they want to be the best at something, if they want to accomplish some stuff, it all depends on what they want to do. Right. And what they put in is what they'll get out. Um, but what I, you know, when I see people trying to do that, especially mm-hmm. people will see with high attention to detail, right. they're looking to be perfect. Mm-hmm. They're looking to get everything done. You know, which in some ways is good, but a lot of that that can be overstressed alone mm-hmm. because we know, and, and I know your time here at Box, so you realize nobody's perfect. We right? Is that fair to say? You're yeah, with that? it's de- it was definitely hard for me for sure, like to kind of realize that. Um, I'm not gonna say that I I'm not gonna say I'm not I'm not okay. I don't think I'm a perfectionist. Yep. But I'm definitely if I would place myself in a spectrum, I'd be like on the lower middle like I do like some things to be perfect and like there's some things that I'm kind of like like for example you just can't touch that stuff it's mine you know it's in a certain order you just can't touch it but then like you know in some aspects like you know when I'm doing an assignment and when it comes to like you know writing something out you know I'm more you know (sighs) I'm Easy I'm a going. little bit easy going, a little careless, right? Yeah, because yeah. I just don't have like the patience to kind of like sit down and, you know, um, think about it. But like, it's just something, but it's something I'm working on. And, and it's something that um, has improved tremendously since I first started. But, you know, it's just something that, you know, we can maybe talk about later or not, but yeah, it's no, something 100%, that. 100%. Stuff, yeah. and, and, I, and I remember that too, when uh, doing your, um, your debrief with you, mm-hmm. um, we can talk about it now. It's been four yeah, months, yeah. just, just laughing about, I remember you know, when you saw kind of an odd number. Oh, yeah. You're like, no, no, it, it's going up. Or it's we're going to an even number. We're going to a yeah. round number. Like if you saw something with like an, a two in it or a three, you were going up to five or you yeah. were going up to zero. Like it has to be clean. I, it has to be clean. And, 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 and I'm still and, like that. And, and to be honest, there, a lot of people are like that. Mm-hmm. And, and again, no, no fault to anybody. That's just the way we are as individuals and stuff like that. Everyone has their different niche. Everyone has a different way. Like you said, in mm-hmm. some areas you have, I want everything to be set in stone. I want right. everything to be nice and neat. And some areas you feel like, you know, careless and stuff like that. And, and that's again on us, how we pick and choose or what we want to accomplish. Right. So there's, there's no good. I just thought I'd, I'd bring that up because I remember when I went through your deep with you because that was like probably the first couple of weeks we, we mm-hmm. met it was just like it, it made me smile it was, yeah. it, was it was something you probably, you probably thought i was crazy but like <laughs> to, to be honest, no no I, I i've done i've been a part of this for a long time mm-hmm. now where trust me i've i i love everyone's different ways of you know that, that's what makes them unique at mm-hmm. the end of the day right so we're all unique and no craziness whatsoever trust me so getting into that let's talk about your experience with boxing yeah what what did you know? What did you enjoy about it? Tell us a little bit about your projects you were doing along the way yeah. here. Just uh, yeah, just tell us more about that. Um. Okay. So I started. I believe. I think it was like end of April. Like yeah, around there. Yeah, around yeah, I would say was it end of April? You know what? Yeah, I can't even keep track. I think of it was. It was like it, yeah, it was like end of April, and wow, it's been so long. Yeah. Wow. Well, time flies by. It's already. Sec- yeah. It's, yeah. It's already yeah, it's like, September. Yeah, it's September. Um, yeah, so I guess like from the beginning of April, um, yeah, I really enjoyed my time here and, um, you know, I think that my favorite part about working at Box Out was probably in a sense working with like the, my team members and, you know, being able to get like all this responsibility to like create something special, mm-hmm. um, I guess more specifically, I guess I should start getting into my projects, but um, obviously Box Out is a very fast growing company and uh, we're trying to find ways to differentiate ourselves from our competitors and also for ourselves too, because, you know, um, if it's anything I've learned uh, in my time at Box Out, I was like, we're not here to, we're not just a, what, a regular company, we're here to actually make a difference. Mm-hmm. And um, that's something that I really appreciate and really, um, you know, take quite personally. So um, again, I guess getting into the projects, uh, my two uh, big projects that I was assigned that I am managing are the creating sustainability report for a, for our, 
for our company, mm -hmm. um, and also creating white papers. Um, so to go more specifically, I guess I'll go with the white papers first, but basically my job is to kind of take all the information that we have and compile it into like a little booklet or um, a book or however we decide to kind of like set it up at the end and just kind of like inform our, um, our clients about, you know, different things that could help you uh, when managing um, people, uh, working on, you know, a few certain traits to like improve yourself um, and whatnot. So uh, that's basically for my white papers, the kind of um, gist of what I'm trying to work on. And the sustainability report is a bit more about kind of like about our company being very transparent about our uh, businesses and how we operate. Um, and also just like to get, just so we can just kind of get out there and people can get to know us. Um, we have, uh, just to show people we have nothing to hide and that we're here to help them. Yeah, yeah. so. And, and that's one thing I mentioned a lot is we're, we're a very transparent company. So mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to sugarcoat anything. We're, we're, we're the type of company that's going to help you um, in whatever aspect we can. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one thing I asked all the interns when I, when I brought them on the show is how did you connect with Boxo? How do I connect with Boxo? Um, so, okay, so I think it's the pretty much similar story to everyone else, but it's like, okay, actually this is a funny story. So um, it all started when I was in class. I was taking this uh, sports marketing class and my teacher was in charge of this kind of like fair, the sports fair. He was like, oh, you guys should show up. I'll give you extra credit if you show up. <laughs> and I was like, Shh, what? fallacy like I don't know I just I was kind of like I'm not gonna show up I have class at that time and uh, we were working on this big project for um, a big company um, so basically this project was we um, our professor he connected us to this uh, sort of organization and we had to try help them make a marketing plan for a certain event that they had to that they were going to showcase in the summer and we were having these one-on-one -on -one meetings like with a group not like one-on-ones with him just like as a group one-on-ones yeah. um, and he just mentioned the fair again. And I just remember just kind of like laughing out loud. Like, if I'm being honest, I don't even remember laughing, but like, he just kind of looked at me. He's like, oh, like, why? You don't think that this is a good opportunity? And I'm like, and I'm like, well, you know, I can't really show up because I have class at that time. And he looks at me straight in the eye like this, like the way I'm looking yeah, at you, yeah, he's yeah. like, I hate people who just kind of like push opportunities like this. Like if I were in your position, I would take this opportunity because you never know. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember looking at him I'm like. Oh, almost in fear. Like, oh my God. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm it, like dude, it. you know what? Like I'll you're kind of okay. right. Yeah, like you're kind of <laughs> right, right? So I went home that day and I kind of just, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I will. I'll do it. I'll do it. So, uh, you know, I bought a ticket and I showed up and, you know, like I met a lot of really, really great companies. Um, and like you, like you guys are kind of like in a corner. Like I even remember which corner you guys were in. <laughs> I mean, I would explain this kind of hard cause like our basement's kind of like big. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so I just kind of remember staring at you guys at the corner and, uh, and you know, I kind of want that Passed you guys a few times, and I was kind of like, oh, whatever. <laughs> um, and then, and then at one point, I was kind of like, you know what? Maybe I'll show up. Um, but what really attracted me was kind of like that you guys had like a tablet set up. And I was okay. like, oh, I wonder if I could try it. <laughs> and <laughs> so I walked up, and you know, um, one of the team members, uh, Casey, he was there, yep. and um, and then he started talking to me about Box Down. I was like, wow, this sounds like a really interesting company that I would love to work for. And then I got to talk to Abs because he was like, oh, you should talk to Abs. He's like the CEO. And I was like, oh, I got to talk to the CEO. <laughs> like that was literally my thought process. Honestly, like I was, just, I was just having so much fun. I was just meeting all these great companies. And, you know, it's kind of like, oh, now I get to meet a CEO. And, you know, like I didn't get to be CEO here. So um, so I ended up uh, talking to Abs. And then we just had like a really good conversation. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll sign up for an internship. And uh, here I am. Here you are today. So, see, yeah. so we got to thank that teacher. To, to give you that little yeah. bit of a push yeah. needed because, again, without, you know, doing it, you would never see this right. opportunity. And, and I mean, I don't know if I should mention his name, but, like, you know, if you're listening to this, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there you go. He, he knows who he is. Yeah, he knows. He, you know who you are. <laughs> um, but that's great. And, and that's one thing where we, especially when I talk to my clients, and mm -hmm. especially, you know, not even my clients, especially for myself, is the mm -hmm. same kind of similar thing is if I didn't take this chance or take this step in this direction to, to you know, 
leave what I had to come do what I truly love at the end of the mm -hmm. day, then I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I am doing one of the things that I love, making that difference, making that change that I want to make. Right. Yeah, so like in 30 seconds, tell me your experience. Uh, I, honestly, my, my experience through this was, um, I met, I met Abs a year, well, actually, no, two years. It would be two years now. Um, Congratulations. Uh, thank two you. years of box out. Our, our, two, our two year anniversary, <laughs> me and Abs, we, we say jokingly. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I, I came, my background was a family company. Mm -hmm. We made windows and doors. And it was something that I just felt like I was kind of pressured into doing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really what I wanted to do. So, I, again, the funny story is I, I kept searching stuff up on Kijiji. Oh. E every day for a month. And I, actually, I don't even think you guys know this story. I, I kept searching it up for a month every day. And I'm the type of person where if the thing doesn't that interest me in the first four things. Yeah. I'm, I'm closing it up. Right. So I did this for a straight month, and I was putting in the same thing for a month. You know, um, psychology, mental development, sales, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. right? The, uh, human, personal development and such. And this one day, I don't know what it was. I don't know if the servers were down. I don't know what a calling in disguise, so to say, was. Boxer was the only company that came up this time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, why not? So I called. We talked. I met Abs. He, he, you know, just like how we brought you guys in and talked mm -hmm. to you. He just blew me away. Mm -hmm. And it was like that, you know, just this weight off my shoulder, like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So now being here for two weeks, you know, being the lead performance coach now, pretty much taking yeah. the business by storm right. and, and growing it more and more and being a part of its growth has just been a blessing in disguise at the yeah. end of the day, right? Because if I didn't take that step to make the initiative to make the change, then again, I, who knows where I'd be. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be having this podcast right now, or maybe we, you would, but not with me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so who, who knows, right? Uh, but Hadi Deli, because I was the one that said we should do a podcast, so right. I'm taking credit. Um, but yeah, so that that's a little bit of like my journey here and stuff. So let, let's go back to, you know, the box out traits, you know, now that you know more about it when you guys first came in, because I know you guys were all surprised at how in depth we go mm -hmm. when we take measurements and such, right? So if we had to go from the visual side, cognitive side, and psychology side, which one of all these traits are the ones that stood out to you that you felt really helped you from a, you know, from school perspective? Um, definitely cognitive. cognitive. I'll say cognitive. Yeah. I mean, visual is important yep. in a sense where like, you know, you have like your computer, you have to stare at and stuff like that. Um, and then you have like the board to stare at. But mm -hmm. I think cognitive was probably like the most um, like helpful for me. Most helpful for you. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? I, I hear that a lot with a lot of people too. And, and it's key, right? Because one mm -hmm. thing we always, always know and we, we preach this a lot with you guys is mm -hmm. everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody learns differently. Everyone speaks differently. Everyone takes information differently. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that still goes on is everyone's going to talk the same way. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? We all know this, but it's still everyone getting taught the same mm -hmm. way. And, and that's where I see that disconnection still is we, we see a lot of this, but not mm -hmm. a lot of, of action, right? Where... We look at, you know, something from a school perspective, you know, for the consistent basis, planning. Right. You know, part of the reasoning side where we got to plan. We, mm -hmm. we got to be prepared, you know, whether it's making calendars, making all these sheets, right? Like, so if you can give us kind of, a, you know, advice in a sense to, to these students of today or, even, right. you know, in the business world, mm -hmm. how, how do you think that like, the cognitive side can be so helpful and useful? Yeah. Um, I want to, like, go back when you said first, I want to talk about planning. Yeah. So... Planning, in my opinion, is a really important aspect of actually being successful in school. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact um, it was really important for me um, kind of being like, but not necessarily just planning, but being like an organized planner. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me a long time to actually figure it out. And mainly because I didn't know exactly what like how I worked. Um, and like I went through like a lot of like um, sort of like um, assessments to get to like that point. Yep. Um, but like now I know like exactly how it works. So it's like, for me, it's like a lot easier to kind of like, um, kind of figure out how I learn now. Yep. Just because now I know that like, I figure out like the issues that I have, sorry. No worries. <laughs> uh, you know, I figure out the issues that I have. So it's like now it's easier for me to plan over that. And I'm starting to see more success. But the one thing I realized that really helped me was writing it down physically. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my last year, I got like a big calendar and I started writing down like when I have my assignments, uh, when I have classes, um, when I have exams, midterms, just everything that I, I need to get done, I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. Because when you write it down, 
physic like on a physical piece of paper like on a calendar like anywhere an agenda whatever you have whatever works for you yep. it kind of like gives you like a responsibility to get it done it, it holds you accountable yeah it holds you accountable in a sense um but here's the one thing so like i was like watching this ted talk i can't remember who i can't remember who um like who talked about this but um i remember watching this tech talk and i started using this um and it started but it's kind of like it kind of describes like oh sorry uh it kind of describes like who does well in school and who doesn't and he and this person kind of like pinpoint exactly what the differences were and he said the first thing is um he talks about like when people write tests like what they do is like um you know they do pa- practice tests and stuff like that and like once they do practice they kind of like um are prepared for any kind of question because you know they aren't memorizing how to answer the question Mm -hmm. they kind of remember they're kind of like figuring out how to do it because they have different questions so like they kind of can see like different variations because they do different practice tests right Mm -hmm. but the one thing they talk about is planning and they the successful people they have their calendars but they don't necessarily put down like their school work first. What they plan first is actually what they'd like to do for fun. Okay. They prioritize, um, they prioritize the things that like their hobbies and stuff like that because now they have something to look forward to. Okay. And then whatever they have time left for is for their schoolwork. And um and I'm not gonna say that I necessarily do that, but I do I do take the things that I feel that are most important and I make time for that. So like for me, like, you know, going out on a jog every day is very important for me. So I always allocate time for that. Okay. And that's something that I will never, like, that's like a must do. Like it's non-negotiable. It's going to happen. Right. Yep. So you need to find your non-negotiables and you need to put them on your calendar first. Yep. So just to make time for them. So, you know, like this is something I want to do and this is something I'm going to do the rest of the time that you have left will be done for your schoolwork, studying, or like uh, any engagements that you have. Like, for example, if you work outside, um, if you work, uh, that also needs to go in second. Mm-hmm. Um, but make sure that you don't obviously plan your work schedule with like your non-negotiables because that's yeah. not going to, you know, you still have a commitment to work. So. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think another word we can use for non-negotiable is mental toughness. Oh, yeah, for right? sure. Because you know, what, what you're mentioning there, like the non-negotiables, the mm-hmm. mental toughness is is no matter what, doing this, sticking with this routine and being mm-hmm. consistent with it. And another thing that this does for the rest of, like you said, the planning is this is kind of like our motivation. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what's key, right? Because everyone needs that little bit of motivation to, to get us through the day, yeah. get us through the month, get us through the mm-hmm. year, especially during the school year, right? They, for a lot of people, um, I can only tell this from from references and stuff like that where people are always you know again overwhelmed stressed out where they got to find these little things to do to get them going in the Mm -hmm. right direction right and like you mentioned planning is a big part of it because you got to organize a lot of things Mm -hmm. you got to you know calendars assess uh, assignments tests all this kind of stuff and if you don't write it down and this is something i found for myself is once i started writing things down physically on pen and paper is I started seeing it with my own eyes and then I started holding myself accountable for it. Yeah. Because there were so many times before where I, I would speak it out loud, this is what I'm going to do today. Right. And none of it happened. Mm-hmm. So right, writing <laughs> oh it down. Oh my God, sort my life. <laughs> so, so writing it down is a key key, key, key life hack, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll say here from Box Up. <laughs> a key takeaway from key, yeah, this key, uh, a, podcast. A, a, a key takeaway and everything. So. Well, I just want to mention one last thing is like, um, and this is might be kind of related, but it is related to success in university. Mm-hmm. Um, but also the one thing I found that uh, was very helpful for me is finding the right group of friends. Oh, huge, um, huge. The people you so, surround yourself with is, is yeah, so important. Exactly. So like I'm fortunate enough to have I'm, – I'm very lucky, but I do have uh, – I have like – I only have like a few friends and, you know, they're friends I can really trust and, you know, I love them dearly. Um, you guys know who you are. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and, um, and, you know, I can say this in confidence, but you know, all the friends that I have, they're, you know, they're driven, successful people and, uh, they inspire, they inspire me every day to kind of like be my best self because all they are is also their best selves. And, um, and, you know, surrounding yourself with those kind of like with people like that, you know, is very, like it's very good for like i mean i can say this in a sip sip a logical way oh my god i can't speak <laughs> it's all right go ahead. um but uh but like it's good for your like mind and body and soul in a sense you know it's kind of like you 
you have people you can trust and um you know you can talk to them about your struggles yep. but also you see them being successful and you know you just kind of want that for yourself so like um when you surround yourself with good people mm -hmm. you start kind of like in a sense emulating their actions and um their, their good energy rubs off on you exactly and, right? and that, that's what's key is surrounding yourself with the right people mm -hmm. because again not not only does it motivate you in a sense it you know it strives you for yourself to be the best version of yourself because if you're around again the not so great people mm -hmm. then it's just going to bring us down because yeah. I, I, i'll talk this personally myself is uh, that was a big decision i had to make within myself where i, had, I i'm not going to say cut people out but yeah, distance yeah. myself from people to be the person i am today because mm -hmm. you know it, it wasn't all happy-go-lucky for me so knowing that and myself surrounding myself yeah. with the right people but at the same time also knowing that what i want mm -hmm. knowing that it's 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 my success is like we said earlier is is our own version mm -hmm. what other expectations are compared to our own expectations yeah. so for me that's important um but yeah neil again thank you for being a part of the show if yeah. there's you know one last thing you want to say to these students uh for kind of advice mm -hmm. and yeah um, my advice would be, uh, make sure if you're going to enter university, make sure you want to, um, like I said, like there's different types of success. And, um, if you really feel like university is your route, then go ahead and do it, but don't feel pressured to, um, like I, I definitely wasn't pressured to enter university, something I wanted for myself. Yep. Um, and like I said, because it, and where I wanted to enter, like it was kind of like the only path. Um, but no, but like never feel pressure to do anything. Um, you know, do what you feel is right for you. Uh, and just, you know, if you enter university, you know, make sure that you just kind of hold these experiences that you have, uh, make sure that you have new ones, try new things because you'll never really get a chance to do that. <laughs> I mean, you will, but in university, it's like a great place to do that. So just be yourself and, you know, don't don't feel the pressure yeah you, you you might get a teacher like neil did that you know kind of talked her into that opportunity and this is where she is today yeah um but you might not be lucky enough for a teacher takes that initiative and really you know pushes you in that right direction but neil again thank you very much it was, it was a pleasure yeah, glad to be here um guys thank you for joining the podcast uh you know we're, we're keep going with this tell us your thoughts and yeah see you soon take care